Well, if you've been watching the internet and you follow cycling, you've probably heard about Remco and a local lad who jumped on his wheel and followed him up a climb. And Remco tried to drop him and he couldn't. And he got irritated by that. And then he told him, get off my wheel. Now, we've had a different number of opinions from that. I've seen Durian Ryder's opinion. I've also seen Chris Miller Cycling and Jesse's opinion. And now you're going to get Wano's photo's opinion. So let's roll it in row and let's get into it. And let's have a bit of a chat about what is this all about with this get off my wheel. And is this cycling, cycling etiquette that we need to abide by? Now, a lot of people have this opinion or there's this unwritten rule, cycling etiquette. And I've heard this, and especially people who ride in group rides seem to have this idea of rules. Now, the problem with this etiquette is it seems to vary between people and they all have their different slight variations of what cycling etiquette is. And one of these rules is, You shouldn't just jump on the back of someone's wheel or on a group on the back of their wheel. You should ask politely. You should say, hey, look, can I just get on your wheel? And is that okay? And whatever. Now, I've talked about this before. And my view on this is that's just complete garbage. There is no such rule. It's just something that's made up by a few people who think that they're a little bit special. Same in this situation because Remco couldn't drop him. He got irritated. He was not. He was happy as as long as he thought he was the superior cyclist. So it's a bit of an ego thing. It's a bit of a, you know, it's a psychological thing a person has. Now, if we really get down to the nuts and bolts of it, let's actually look at this etiquette rule, right? Now, the first thing is, if we compare to anything else, like if we're walking around the city or we're driving our car, people walk behind us, people drive behind us, no one's getting upset. There's no etiquette. There's nothing. That's just the way it is because we're all going in the same direction and we all may be following someone for some time. And this is the same when you're cycling. You get on, you, you're riding, and it's quite typical that you may be riding in a similar speed and you just catch up on someone and you go, hey, look, I don't want to have to put down the watts. I'm just commuting home. So I'm just gonna so I'm just gonna jump on this guy wheel. When he turns off or whatever, I'll just keep going. It's not like as if there's some kind of intent to irritate them or whatever. And it works the other way around. Someone jumps on my wheel, so what? Big deal. We're all going in the same direction. And we'll get there when we get there. And in fact, riding in a group is actually more efficient. It doesn't affect the guy in front as much, but you can get drafting, and the more people and the bigger that group is is the more aerodynamic the group becomes. Now, people who are more into cycling seem to embrace this etiquette more. Now, this is where I kind of get a bit perplexed about this because as soon as you go into any club racing or crit racing or or what the pros do or stage racing, drafting is not only a part of the sport, it's actually part of the strategy of racing. So, you may do a breakaway and what you'll do is is you'll have a breakaway with a number of guys and then you share, you share the drafting. And there might be some team members in that group that actually don't want you to get away so they won't pull a turn. They actually won't get to the front and they won't help the group. So it's strategy, strategy, whether you are going to draft and help each other or not going to draft and not going to help each other. So they either decide to pull a turn or to decide not to pull a turn. So this is actually a strategy in cycling, and especially for the sprinters, it's actually advantageous to be drafting and in be a second or third position when you're approaching the finish line. So this whole etiquette thing of behind someone, as soon as you're going to a race format, is complete garbage. So I don't know where it's eventuated from, this thing about jumping on this wheel or 
uh, you're jumping on our group or whatever. Now, the other fact is that when we're just our, uh, what do you call it, commuter racings and we're just riding around, they're public facilities, they're public roads. We've all paid. We're all just going somewhere. It's not like as if someone's following you all around town just to get on your wheel and they're not actually going anywhere. They're just trying to annoy you. They're just riding along. People are just riding along, just going somewhere. It's like, it's not all about you and your little space behind your bike. You know, what are we supposed to do? Keep 20 meters away from people and ask everyone we approach that we come near on their bike? No, it's ridiculous. And to me, if you're a person and you're going to get upset by that, you're just weak-minded. It's all about you thinking you're a, you're elitist, you're something better than someone else, and you don't want someone getting sucked along on your wheel. Why should they get a free ride? It's a selfish mentality, and I disagree with it. And funnily enough, I was actually put a comment over on Chris Miller Cycling's, dropped that down in his comments, what I thought about it. And someone who actually subscribes to me didn't like it, and uh, he dropped a a comment basically saying, unsubscribing, do you follow people around, you know, on their wheel? Yeah, I do. So what? People follow me around on my wheel. So what? So I think this whole etiquette is stuff that we that kind of creeps in to these group rides or these communities, people need to come back to reality. Well, when it comes to the law, there is no law that says that you can't ride on someone's will. There is no law. I don't know of any law anywhere in the world. If someone knows there's a country where there's a law, let me know down below. And it, it can't possibly be a law because it's something that is strategic or a strategy that's used in racing. It's actually done. The pros do it on open roads when they're racing in stage races. The whole peloton, the whole idea of the peloton is being drafted. That's, what, that's why we have breakaways and that's why they, the peloton can catch them because the peloton has more more ability, more aerodynamic to catch because it's a because everyone's being drafted and pulled along and then they can take a turn at the front. And and because there's more refreshed people, they can catch that breakaway easier. That's why generally in most cases the Peloton pulls back the breakaway group. So it's something that is done all all the time and is a strategy of competitive cycling. Well anyway guys, leave your comments down below. What do you think about this etiquette stuff. I've heard all sorts of bizarre stories about etiquette and everyone seems to have all these little different rules that they think is a rule. So I don't believe in any of that etiquette stuff. I think it basically comes down to the road rules and you need to follow those rules. They are the rules that are enforced by the police. They're the rules that have been written into the code, whichever jurisdiction you're in, that's what you need to follow. All of this other unwritten etiquette rules just rubbish that's where i'm gonna leave it guys leave your comments down below and i will see you next this